So, huh, thought I had it all. How y'all doing? Good. Right oh, thank you. Joe, I tell them I already know over half the answer. <laughs> huh? I already know over half the answer. Oh, yeah. I want to ask anyway. It's just kind of polite to ask how you're doing, even though I already know the answer. See how Alice is doing? I see how James is doing. Thank and see, thanks. Joe, I heard Lucy. And so I <laughs> already know that there's some things going on that, uh, that are good, that are good, that are good. So it's good to see you. Good to be another beautiful day. Another beautiful fall day. You know, we live in a very special place. Uh, I mean, you know, it's special because we live here. Virginia is really a beautiful place mm -hmm. in the fall when the leaves start to turn. I mean, they have tours now that go through the mountains and up through the valleys to look at the leaves turning. And it's just absolutely beautiful to see how God is just allowing his nature just to just to adapt to the seasons. And so we just we're thankful for the privilege to be able to, to see and experience and live in this beautiful place. Let's not get complacent. We live in a beautiful place. I don't know if any of you have lived in a desert before. We've had some opportunity to spend some time in the desert. Uh, and it is nothing like this. It is nothing like this. And so we have the opportunity to see the trees and another one of the things that the desert takes away from you. The beautiful water. The water that we have all around us. The water we can see and experience the ocean and all that is so beautiful. And so I'm just grateful, grateful for the privilege to to be here and and I have another great lesson, another great lesson, another great lesson. And I know you all prepared, you've all read it and and Alice even has something extra. And so we're gonna have all we're gonna have a good time this evening just talking about talking about this lesson. Somebody give us a word to open. Somebody give us a word to open. Dear God, our Father, we love you. We thank you for the opportunity to continue to study your word and try to be the best that we can be. We ask that you be here with us this evening as we try to understand your will for our lives and what we should be doing. We thank you for our facilitator. We thank you for our pastor and his family. We ask you to bless them in a very, very special way. We ask blessings for everyone that's on the Zoom tonight, those who want to be on, and those who just can't be on, and anybody who needs a blessing. We thank you, God, for all you do, all you have done, and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Julia. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Before I get into the lesson, and normally when we have special occasions and that kind of thing, one of the first things we do is just to to welcome our guests, to welcome people that we may not know regularly or see regularly. And we have one this evening. I want to do that I, in the last part of the session, the last time she was here. Uh, but Sister Rouse, uh, welcome. Uh, welcome, Sister Celeste uh, Rouse. Uh, she's one of Reverend Shackelford's uh, members. And I, and the reason I'm calling you out now, Sister Rouse, is because I got a text message from Sister our Reverend Shackelford and said she thought she would be home uh, by now to be able to come, but she's not quite there yet, but uh, she hopes to be be with us next week. But Sister Rouse, it's good to have you uh, with us again, uh, with us Thank again. Thank you. It's good to be here again. I'm, I'm very excited about this lesson. Well, good. Well, good. You're in the right place. I'm excited, too. I'm excited, oh, too. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is a this is a lesson. This is a the lesson is focusing on something that when I thought about it, when I first started looking at it and, and studying it, I, it took me back to when I was a kid, a child. Uh, I learned this when I was a child. A lot of us, had, when we were very young, well, our first exposures to the 23rd song was when we were young, uh, when we were very young. I can remember back in, in school, we had in the morning for our devotions, of course, we, we pledge allegiance to the flag and Maybe sing some. We had to go around the classroom and do Bible verses. Y'all, anybody else had to do that? Bible verses in school? I had to do Bible yes. verses in school. And of course, you know the one that folks would jump on. It would always go to that that little short one. Uh, if you yeah, that's right, I saw your mouth, Julie. Jesus wept. But but you know, but there's other ones who we we might try to 
get to that we were familiar with. Lord is my shepherd. I shall not, not jump on that one. Uh, and so we had that exposure to I had that exposure to it when I was a child. Uh, but like some other things that I was exposed to when I was a child, I uh, didn't really understand the true meaning, all of the significance of what that particular verse was saying. And as a child, know as much about David as I do, as we do today. We know a lot about David. And so those of us who have studied some and know something about David, we can un we should understand that the 23rd song really just, it looks like it could be David. <laughs> you could just take the 23rd song away and say David. And that mm -hmm. could be the title of that song uh, because it says so much about him and because of how he was connected to. David started off as what? How did David start off? Shepherd. He was a shepherd. So David had some insight. He had some experience with what he was talking about, how he always was describing how God or who God was to him. And so his experience with a shepherd, and he not only was a shepherd, but what else was David? He went from one extreme to the other. King. 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 David was from a shepherd to a king, to a king. And between all that, between all that, I believe the 23rd Psalm talks to us about David's experience with God from the time he was a shepherd uh, and, to, and through his experience as a king. We talked about David before. We said David was a man after God's own heart. God's own heart was special in the sight of God. And so the, uh, to me, uh, Sister Rouse, the 23rd Psalm really just has great significance of, of describing David's walk, his journey. Uh, and I, as he describes that, we'll make application. I hope we can make application to our own walk and journey. And plus, I, I, I'm, it's good too. I hope every time we look at a scripture and every time we might take time to go through it, part a piece of scripture, we can just see a little bit something that we didn't see before. A little bit of something that we didn't see before. I did. I won't tell you what mine is. But I, I saw a little bit of something that I didn't, I had not really seen before and so that's me I, i'll say that now uh i'll allow other someone else that might want to just talk about that 23rd song experience i'll hold yours your special piece alice to to later but now right now just in our reading of the lesson maybe listen to uh mr penny or something else along the week anybody else want to talk about 23rd song mm -hmm. Okay. Any any sheep here tonight? Any sheep in the audience? I have any oh sheep? yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I got that part clear. Well, what what about any any shepherds? Is, is there a shepherd in the house? Yes. Okay. I, I just, I'm checking to see what you read in this I lesson. Try. I try. I'm <laughs> I'm check I'm checking on Joe. I'm checking on the lesson readers. Checking mm -hmm. on the lesson readers. There. That that was a check. That was a check. Okay. So what I want to do? What I'd like to do? Uh, let, let's play Mr. Penny's seven minutes. We'll, we'll play that. Uh, listen to that. Then we'll talk a little bit. And then we'll do some discussion of, of what we what we experienced through our reading. Lord, you are my shepherd. And I shall not... David, the writer of Psalms 23, was a shepherd in his youth. But please note, this psalm is written from the perspective of the sheep. So when David writes as Yahweh as his shepherd, David envisions God as his provider and protector, but also his king and his leader. David, who came from shepherd to king, writes, with the Lord as my shepherd, I lack nothing. His words are in contrast to our consumer society, where we constantly are being told we have to buy new stuff to be appealing, to be better, to be happy. In this passage, David recognizes the source of his blessings, that his provider of for actual needs is Yahweh. The grateful king is describing God's relationship to him in terms of a kindly shepherd's relationship to one of his sheep. First, he understands that the shepherd leads his flock guiding them along a path so that they can get rest, so that they can eat, and so that they will be safe. David, who had experienced ups and downs in his career and in his life, reaffirms here that even in 
our times of insecurity, that our God will lead us. David, the shepherd, knows that sheep lie down to rest only after they have been fed. At a time when real hunger was common, David writes that God provides adequate food to eat, still water to drink, and his bounty is so much that they can rest without worrying and they can focus on God. So you have to ask yourself the question, what is the shepherd's motivation in this psalm? It can't be money. God has everything. David asserts the motivation is his reputation. His compassion is motivated by a desire to be known by his sheep, by his flock. Just as parents are sometimes evaluated by the way they care for their children, shepherds are judged by the condition of their flock. David was a man who had faced challenges in his life. Remember, a jealous King Saul sought to kill him. So David warns us that we may face trials and tribulations. Christians are not promised a pain-free life. But David says, we have no reason to fear if we stay in the presence of God and follow his path, for he is motivated to care for us because he wants us to know him. In this song of praise, David writes about dark and dangerous places, but then he reminds us that our shepherd holds the power to protect us in his hand. His rod and staff are instruments designed to protect us from forces that would hurt us. And they're designed to discipline us so that we will be motivated to walk along the right path and keep us safe. In the first four verses, David describes his relationship with God like a shepherd and a sheep. Now, in the remainder of Psalms, David describes his relationship in terms of hospitality and a host. The relationship of a host with his guests, even closer than that of a shepherd with his sheep. In the Bedouin law of hospitality, it tells us that no greater security or comfort could be obtained by a traveler in ancient times than to be offered hospitality in the tent of a shepherd. This offer was a provision of shelter, food, fellowship, and a guarantee of protection from harm. The table prepared in the presence of David's enemy was the host's public announcement not to attempt to molest David in any way. David is in essence saying that his host was a man of influence and generosity, of prestige and power, so much so that even in the face of enemies surrounding him, he could set out a table and enjoy the bounty of his host without fear. In essence, he was protected by God, even in the face of threat. In this song of praise, David wants people to know how generous God is. He says, he rubs oil, anoints my head with oil, and the cup was running over with oil. He is so generous. In this imagery, God is the provider, abundantly supplying satisfaction and security, grace and fellowship. Having been accepted in the tent of the Most High God, David confidently summarizes his psalm by saying he has a secure feeling. David proclaims that I know God's goodness and his love was so great. Why should I ever leave the tent? So I'm going to be here forever. The blessings and peace which David experiences in his life and expresses in this psalm would be a delight for any of us. But how can we be assured that we would have this in our lives? The answer is simple. In order to enjoy the benefits of the care of God, the Good Shepherd, we must be one of his sheep. For John tells us, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give eternal life to them, and they shall never perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. That's the lesson for this week. You have a great week. Bye. As you take control. Okay. Excuse me. And, and so, you know, I did something different that time. I took notes. Uh, I guess I'd looked at it before, but I didn't write anything. I didn't really write it down.
just took a couple of notes, but as you listen to that again, I know you've already heard it before, but was there anything that, that sort of jumped out at anybody, anything interesting about Mr. Penny's uh, sharing? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay. Uh, well, well, tell me something. Uh, I don't know how many of you know anything about sheep. I grew up on a farm, but we didn't have sheep. So I didn't get, the, get an opp a first-hand opportunity to deal with sheep. So I learned something about sheep. Anybody learn anything about sheep from the lesson or from listening to Mr. Penny? Well, she, not that Man. I grew up on a farm, but sheep, um, they need protection because they are prone to wander off. They can get themselves into trouble quickly. And it and if one sheep falls, that they, they tend to follow one another. So mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why mm -hmm. the shepherds have a hooked like a, a staff uh, with a hook on it because if one just jumps off, the others behind them will follow. Unlike yeah. goats and others that, I mean, I don't want to say they got a little more sense, but <laughs> they are a little more aware of where they are. Yeah, that's good, Al. Yeah. Sheep, uh, you got to really kind of control them. They don't have any real instincts about, you take them out there and get lost, they certainly won't find their way back. So they need to have some guidance and you're right about They'll, they'll, they'll follow just about any sheep, other sheep going where, but and and that's that's something you got to watch out for. Anything else about sheep? Tell me something else about other sheep. Thing that I see about sheep is they don't seem to have any way to really protect themselves. Okay. You know, they yeah. don't seem to be fighters or biters or stingers or they just kind of docile and go along. Yeah. You know, there you go. That's a good one, Julie. They don't they don't fight nobody. <laughs> sheep won't bite you, won't kick you, won't do anything to you. So sheep are kind of docile, so they won't harm you. What else? What else? And back sheep? then they looked at they viewed the sheep as having wealth. Okay. The sheep had wealth or sheep her owners. Uh, the, the owner had wealth. Okay, okay, there you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. They had some they and worked. the good shepherd, the good shepherd, uh, they knew the shepherd's voice, and it, it was a hired hand, they would they may even run away because they didn't know that voice. Yeah, absolutely. And so all those things, I, I got anybody else? All those things are good. I got a couple that I, that jumped out at me. The ones you said I'm, I'm kind of familiar with. These I were not, these things I did not, were not things I knew about sheep. Uh, sheep won't rest or lay down when they're hungry. When sheep are hungry, they won't rest. They won't lay down when they're hungry. That's one. The other one is sheep won't drink from running water. Sheep won't drink from running water. So shepherds had to, in many cases, put up a little dam to stop the water from flowing uh, so the sheep would drink. <laughs> Another thing about sheep, and I don't know if it's in this lesson or somewhere, but sheep are like camels. They can go a long time without water. And wherever I read this, it said when a sheep did get some water, was you know in the presence of water, could drink, they might drink two and a half or more gallons at one time. That, maybe that was in the lesson someplace. But you know that's those are things I didn't know about sheep. And so all the things that you said, plus these things that I said, then now do we connect those to Psalm twenty three? Those things that you said about sheep, about what they did, how they are. Still waters, green pastures, uh, lie down. Those pieces that you, that we talked about, talked about, and I shared, and that you shared also. Also, sheep are docile; uh, they won't harm anybody. They 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 need a shepherd. Uh, Alice mentioned about the rod, staff, or getting them back in line. And so, all those things are helpful, I believe, uh, about sheep. Mr. Penny said he's focusing on sheep, but also as he talked about through that lesson, he talked about the shepherd. The shepherd. And what did he say about the shepherd? If a shepherd was out there and a stranger came along, what would the shepherd do? Oh, what would the shepherd do? Would he, would he just say, well, hey, how you doing? Keep on going? Or would he invite him in? He'd invite him in and be very gracious and protective of him. And so she, that's absolutely right, Julia. So shepherds had the reputation of being kind, being generous. And if you were in the camp with a shepherd, 
you were likely in a place where you're going to get some protection, maybe get some good food. Uh, and one of the customs that they had back then was when someone came in, uh, they, you, they'd anoint you, put oil on you. Uh, and so that, that could be expected too if it came into the shepherd's camp. Uh, and and he and he would you know give you some protection because he was a person who was protecting his sheep, give you some food. He had good food. He treats you with hospitality, uh, and so shepherds had the reputation of being good people, good people. And and if you were in the presence of a shepherd, uh, uh, you knew that. And so again, this connects to the twenty third Psalm when you're in God's presence and the kinds of things that that God does for us. So and I'm just sort of paraphrasing and sort of connecting connecting it a little bit. We'll go into a little more detail in a minute, but just looking at that connection between Mr. Penny's comments about sheep, about the shepherd, and about how this comes together for us as we look at God and who he is for us. Uh, and and one, the last piece that Mr. Penny said, one of the last pieces, he said, we must be one of his sheep to enjoy this. We must, we must be one of his sheep to enjoy this. And so what is this saying to us in order for us to, to have benefit of all those things that that are being promised or being talked about in, in the 23rd Psalm, we have to be one of the sheep. He won't pull in a goat like it else. A goat won't get it. Uh, a pig won't get it. Or somebody's outside of that fold. Maybe somebody else's sheep won't get the care that this particular shepherd, uh, shepherd will. But we have to be one of his flock uh, in order to be able to, to enjoy his care. Anybody else? Anybody else about, about that, Mr. Penny's presentation? They're all kind of quiet. I don't know what that means. I can't be doing that well. Okay. Okay. Let, let's let's look at some more. Uh, go to the lesson for just a bit. Let's go to the lesson for just a bit. So let's see here. Let's get this up. Here we go. All right. Can you see that? Anybody see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a lesson focused uh, confidence in God's shepherding. Uh, of course, the 23rd song is, is a focus. I'll read some of this. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I, I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will feel no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare, excuse me, a table before me in the presence of the enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And so Psalm 23, uh, 23 is a song of David, who was raised, as we already talked about, as a shepherd. As a shepherd, he fought lions and bears to protect his sheep. He was well acquainted with all the responsibilities of shepherding. David uses his experience as a shepherd to illustrate the love and care of God. In ancient Middle Eastern culture, sheep were prized symbols of wealth. We talked about that. Their wool was used to make yarn. Also, sheep were a common animal for sacrifice uh, for food, which made them especially precious. David opens by affirming the Lord as a shepherd and that he was everything he needs. First, he delights in God's care, providing everything he needed. As his shepherd, the Lord also guided him. He led David beside still waters, which may be interpreted as a resting place, like a shepherd who knows the right path to lead the sheep home. The Lord led David down a path uh, to bring glory to his name. Confidence. God is, is a shepherd. And we, of, course, we, of course, we look at the first four verses uh, of Psalm 23, the first four verses. David next describes God's protection. With God as his shepherd, David had no reason to fear. The shepherd protected his sheep. He fought off wild animals that might attack them. The shepherd used his rod and staff to protect the flock. At night, the shepherd would lay in a doorway to the sheep pen, using his body as a bar, anyone who might try to steal the sheep. David experienced God's presence and protection. The Lord is also the shepherd for believers today. We have the same intimate, lifelong fellowship with him. We experience God's love and peace when facing stressful, stressful situations. Jesus describes himself as a good shepherd. 
uh, as our leader, he provides all our needs, restores us and guides us to safety and paths, to safety and paths pleasing to him, bringing glory to his name. And we see now, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And that's one of the things about shepherds and a good shepherd anyway, that if anything came to attack those sheep, that shepherd would do almost anything, including put himself in, in between the harm that might come to his, his sheep. And so David had that reputation. God had seen David two times when he'd kill lions and bears and all kinds of animals that had attacked him. So David had that experience of knowing what it was to be a good shepherd, to be a good shepherd. Guest in God's house. Uh, and we talked about how the shepherd would prepare for those who might come to, to be with him. And in the last bit of that, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will go in the house of the Lord forever. And we'll talk about that too as we go on. Gee, the song shifts to God as, as gracious host and provider. God offers safety and protection, even spread in a table of lavish hospitality. Even in the presence of David's enemies, the Lord made provisions for him. God's abundant care can be symbolized by the anointing with oil and the overflowing cup. The psalm ends with David affirming that God gives him victory over death and that he will spend eternity with him. Okay, and so let, let's, well, before I do that, let me, let me stop. Uh, let me stop here. Okay, so we, we, we see, again, this is, and Psalm is, is a rather short uh, a book of the Bible, uh, 26 verses, uh, but what we talked about, uh, David, and as he connected, as David connected to how God had had been with him, his experiences with God. And so the, I have some questions that are going to ask us about our experiences with God. But as you looked at David, are there any other things that you might think of uh, that David experienced with God that, that you could connect with, that you connect with the song as, as far as David's experience, so maybe even yours? Telling you, y'all, y'all know how to unmute. Everybody's muted. I don't hear nobody's. I don't see nobody's mouth moving. So I guess you're not saying. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I shared this story before, but uh, it it did come up in my mind as I was reading this. Um, in regards to how. <laughs> I was pretty much warned in regards to um, 9 11 mm -hmm. and that assignment that I was supposed to have. And I was, I was telling you how I got sick. I just felt so nauseated in my stomach, in my gut. And I just couldn't figure out why. No clue. But it showed up. Mm hmm. 9-11, mm -hmm. that I was supposed to go to the Pentagon, but I managed to take my branch manager out to lunch, kind of bribed her a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I just fell so in Robin, my gut. Robin, do you see that as an impact or maybe an influence of a shepherd, some, someone God's watching over you, protecting you? No doubt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So no that doubt. could be a personal that could be a personal experience as, as what that shepherding kind of love that God has for us. And I know my, many of us, and we'll talk about let's let's go to the questions to see if I can come up with more responses here. Oh, get, get you guys motivated. God still seeks to lead, protect, and provide for his people. As believers, we must submit to his leading as sheep to be shepherded. How do you relate to God as your shepherd? And so Robin, you could probably do that one. Uh, but others might say, do you feel as, as though the the shepherd knows who you are. That's a question. Do you feel as though the shepherd knows who you are? And so I guess we have to look inside, look inter internally or, or think in, internally in, my, in our spirits to know, do you know, do you think the shepherd knows who you are? Uh, and so that's a question. I won't ask anybody to really answer that one, but that's, that's one of those questions I think we should ask. Uh, another one could be, uh, do you feel safer believing he's watching over you? Now, I can ask, answer that if you like. Do, do you feel safer? Uh, watching, safer believing he's watching over you. Okay. I, I, I guess I see your head shaking. 
Uh, another one. Have you felt his rod? And this is what I want to talk about. Have you felt his rod? Have you felt his rod? Now, this is that thing, Alice, I think you're talking about. A rod and a staff. Uh, that, that the shepherd uses this thing sort of to hold himself up to walk around. But on the end of that thing, there's a hook. There's a hook in there that he can grab hold and, and, and all that with that rod and, and that staff to grab. So that rod, has anybody felt that rod? I don't mean hitting you. I think yeah. that's your conscious. You know, you know you're doing something wrong. Your conscious kind of, well, for me, as you always say, for me, if I know I'm not doing what I, what I think God would want me to do, I have a look, my conscience gets pricked. So to me, that's like the hook saying, all right, now you got to come back. You can't do that. Okay. All right. Anybody else? I agree with what Julia said. Um, I think that internal small voice, your thought patterns, and when you were really, when you were young, say when I was off in school and something, and you you know right from wrong because you know what your parents taught you. But we're going to try this any rate. And then you have that kind of, if you went and had a good time and you got back and didn't get in trouble, you said, boy, I escaped that one this time. But you also knew that if you went somewhere, especially when I was in college, they said, these are the forbidden places to go. You can't go. I don't know why those places were like a magnet. You just it's just like someone had a sign out that said, don't go here, but you went there. But you really you had a good time, but you really didn't, because you know you might get in trouble. So that and as we get older, because you know you kind of just push it off, but as I've gotten older and lived through a lot of life experiences, you realize that that and he protects us from some of our from all of our foolish ways that we and until we grow in wisdom. That, that's good, Alice. I'm going to pick that piece that you just used later on. I, I kind of hit on that same kind of idea about as we grow older and look back at some things. Anybody else? I'll, before I move on, I'm going. Okay. And so we've all had an opportunity to, to have felt his rod, hopefully. Uh, well, yeah, we have. We have. Uh, okay. Two, a second question. Even believers have problems. We have enemies. Uh, we can experience periods of darkness in our lives as David did. How has the Lord protected you or comforted you during trying times? Uh, share an instance of being comforted, an instance of being comforted. Anybody, anybody have any, I don't want to go too deep in, in your stuff, but there may have been a situation that you might have found yourself in some precarious situation and, and because of you don't know why. Maybe even in many cases, I believe, this happens with situations where nobody knows about. Nobody knows about this thing that's happened. And somehow in your and your and your silence and and, and your in your own little space, you feel like uh, you're comforted in this situation that you've been well anyway, I'm not gonna go and do any psychoanalyzing right now, but I, I think we can all probably attest to the fact that we've had comfort in situations that that we've come through. And that's that peace that comes from that presence of God. Uh, okay, number three, this is the one for you, Alice. Uh, when, when, when was an occasion that God's goodness followed, even pursued you, but you didn't recognize it at the time? How did you grow spiritually from the experience? And I, for my point with this, I said, take a moment to look, uh, to look or think back to when you had your mind on one thing, but the shepherd, and I said, you know, Shepherd maybe had had some other plan for it, and so I don't have you don't have to really testify to this, but I can, we all have had those experiences where we uh, had our minds set to do something, uh, and somehow, and Julie, you say uh, something spoke to you, but I, 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 as I go older, uh, if we talk about our conscience, I'm going to give conscience that credit of being what Alice sort of alluded to uh, the. the Really speaking to us, I think it's the spirit that speaks to us. I want to. My conscience has told me to do something crazy, but I'm hoping now that that book that here would be the spirit that would speak and try to tell. That's not what you should say. That's not where you should go. Right? Because well, I'm not going. See, we're not going to the club like we used to, James. So we don't have to worry <laughs> about that. That little boy saying you don't need to go to the club tonight. We ain't going to the club right. like we used to, but we do get our little get our little uh, emotions wound up sometimes. And I'm gonna tell that where and see that 
do it again. And we, we, do that. <laughs> we, we do that one. And so then I think now it's the Holy Spirit that says, Lucy, let it go. Exactly. Let, let it go. It, it, let, let it go. go. Because you know what's going to be more painful, Lucy? Lucy has come to this come conclusion. It's going to be more painful for me to have to go back and apologize for that after I say it, because I know I'm going to be convicted. I had to go back. and It's more painful to go back and apologize than to just hold on to what I want to say. Is that, I'm speaking for you, Lucy, but what I'm saying for me, I found it's easier, it's better me for me now to listen to the Spirit and not respond in some way that's unfitting. Because I know, and I know you know too, when I do that or when you do that, the only obligation is to go back and apologize. Isn't it? That's my obligation. I won't put it on y'all. It's my obligation when I speak in some way that does not represent who I'm trying to represent. Y'all know who I'm trying to represent, right? I'm one of his children. I'm trying to represent him. And when I speak or act in some way that doesn't look like that, I am pressed to go back and try to make that right. And so wisdom now, that little voice that my, my conscience, or it's wisdom for me in the Holy Spirit that says, don't do that. Don't, don't say that. Don't say that. Right. I must say this. Uh, I don't think, when, as I say, when we were youngsters and I was a teenager and, a, and, and on through the formative years. And when I went away from home to school, I also had some mediators at some people at home. They were more like the shepherd or the sheep because they had already told you, you go, to, you go up there, don't mess up. Don't do this. Don't do that. So even if you knew you would might be stepping someplace, I thought I would rather face something else than to face my grandmother and my parents. I thought they mm -hmm. said, don't make us shame. You go up there, you do what you're supposed to do. So they were, they were praying. They were in the middle between me and there they were. And then God was on the other side of, of that. Because as a, as a teenager, you might not have thought too much. You knew right from wrong. You always knew that. But you said, well, this one, two times, one time won't hurt. But I thought if I got in trouble and, and if they school called you up, I would have to face them first. And that would be, that's the worst um, punishment you could get is the facing them, facing and disappointing your people. That's right. That's good, Alice. That's good. That, 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 we had that respect for them then. I, I call that respect. Some of it was fear. Uh, maybe more <laughs> of we, we had fear and respect for them. And, and wanted to do what was right. And that, that's something that's missing today. I, I don't think people fear that anymore. I don't think they do as much as they did. Okay, uh, take a moment. We look back. Uh, sometimes much of our spiritual growth comes from retrospective meditation. Retrospective meditation. What is that, y'all? Retrospective meditation. Sometimes most, a lot of our spiritual growth comes from me retrospective meditation what could that be thinking on things that have happened to you in yeah, the past thinking back looking back, looking back mm -hmm. yeah looking back yeah. and seeing those things mm -hmm. that alice when i thought of you we thought we were slick and we just oh. did the right it wasn't because of that it was because of those prayers that were coming from south carolina up there to virginia that were covering, that were covering you or for me and you joe when we were you know miles and miles across the great blues or whatever wherever we were uh, we were doing what we were doing, but somebody back in here, back at home, were praying for us. They kept us safe in those situations that we found ourselves. So that retrospective meditation, and I do, we do that more as we as we age a bit. We have more things to look back over, and we can certainly come to the conclusions that I'm growing because I believe now more than I've ever believed before that those prayers that they talked about were really keeping me. Amen. Those prayers that we talked about were really keeping us. Really keeping us. Amen. Uh, okay, hopefully we grow to uh to be more sensitive. It's, how do we grow uh, how do we grow uh spiritually from the experience? Hopefully we grow to be more sensitive to the possibility and reality of our shepherd watching over us and providing for us. And so all those things help us to grow to be more sensitive. Last question. What specific things can we do to prepare better? to dwell with the Lord forever. What particular, what specific thing can we do to prepare better to dwell with the Lord forever? And the one, I only picked one, this is mine, but you can pick up have some others. Help others to know and believe that the Lord is their shepherd as well. Uh, why would that help? 
Let's dwell with the Lord forever. Why would that help us dwell with the Lord forever? And I thought about Robin when I when I thought about that. When I wrote that, I thought about Robin. If that's a hint for you, Robin. <laughs> Not a hint. <laughs> okay, I said that because, and I thought about Robin the other week. You asked about uh, grieving. I talked about grieving, and, and how you know that was. Uh, Excessive grieving, or is there too much grieving? I don't know, I know exactly how you how you phrased it, uh, but my response was: uh, those of us when we lose loved ones, uh, and when they grieve, I believe I said we don't grieve as those who have no hope. We don't grieve as those who have no hope, and what that means is that we have to live in such a way that those who have left us, those who have been around us, that we have another opportunity to see them, to be with them, to experience them again. Uh, and so I, I believe our efforts to help those around us to grow and to understand and to be uh, uh, who we want them to be, or who God wants them to be, uh, is, is a betterment for them and for us. And, and because it connects us. It makes that permanent connection. So it could be could be that. Anybody, what, let me get the question again so you all remember what the question was. What specific things can we do to prepare, uh, to better prepare to dwell with the Lord forever. Now you know what forever is, right? Forever is for forever. What 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 specific things can we do to better prepare uh, to dwell with the Lord forever? I think one thing that we can do is what we do now: try to study the Word, so that we can, you know, be prepared. We so that we will know what God will have us to do. We don't have to guess. We know, not that we absolutely. don't know. I mean, you know, yeah, studying absolutely. the Word. I think would would absolutely, Julia. Because you know there there are benefits to this. What are the benefits to what we're doing? This particular story, study and doing what Julia just said. We grow stronger. Say again. Mm -hmm. Say again, Jane. Grow stronger. Okay. Well. Okay. Grow uh, stronger in Christ. Oh, oh, that's stronger. Okay. All right. It's I got gotcha. that. Eternal life. Eternal life. Yeah. 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 Uh, and you know what? Uh, Bible, you know, remember our offertory sentences that we, we don't use them anymore. One of the one of the sentences in offertory sentences that said, uh, uh, store not up for yourself. Treasures on, on earth. earth. Where well, what? Moth, 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 moth dust corrupt moth, and thieves right. break through and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven. Right. Huh? And yeah. so yeah. when we're talking about this, is what we're doing. It, it, it makes us stronger, as James said. It, it allows us to do some things, but we get rewards for doing what God has called us to do. This is, I mean, I'm not saying you have to work. You know, we don't work for salvation. We know that, right? That's a gift. But the other, as we work and continue to do what God has called us to do, there's potential for reward. So that's another incentive, I believe, for doing these things that God has called us to do. I think that the more we study, and the more we work on trying to be the best that we can be, the more peaceful we would come, we become. Yeah. And I think we that's a reward in itself. As we live every day, right. you feel much better about who you are, what you are doing. Yeah. And you just say, thank you, God, that, you know, as they say, we're supposed to try to be better tomorrow than we were today. Mm -hmm. And I think doing things like we're doing, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to be what God will have us to be. And that gives a lot of peace in our everyday life, in my estimation. Julia, that is great. That's the best point. You, that's that's great. Because, you know, it's not all about getting to heaven. We all want to go there. We know streets paid with gold. You know, it's all, you know, praising God every day. And we know that's great. But you know what, what Julia said? It's, it's about living today. You know what? If somebody could buy some peace over there in Ukraine, and you know how much they would pay for? Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea? Everything they had mm -hmm. just to have peace. I might be somebody down your street. Maybe somebody down the street. Some one of them, one of the people that I, man, if I could just get some peace up in here. Mm -hmm. But what she's saying is when we do what we're, when we're studying and we're growing stronger, as James said, it allows us to enjoy now, today. So this world's not our, we're not going to be here forever. But it would be certainly nice that while we were here, we could just enjoy this, like I told you about this beautiful day. We can enjoy the peace of our environment. I mean, our surroundings, our family and friends. So yes, absolutely, Julia, we can enjoy 
this today. Amen. Thank you. Any, any anything else? I want to move. Okay, I got a few minutes. Okay, let's let's see what where am I else? Where am I else with this? I think I've got one more piece. Okay, uh, the last one. The Lord cares for his people and provides for all their needs. He comforts and protects. We are dependent on him like sheep are dependent on their shepherd. I'm going to just hit on this real quickly. But this is an interesting to me. This is a piece of, of Psalm 23. I don't really find it like a... And so in our reading someplace, it talks about being a sheep and also being a shepherd. Y'all remember that? Anybody read that? Mm -hmm. We have a responsibility to be sheep. Mm -hmm. To be a to be kind, to be the sheep that, that are obedient and follow and do the things that they're supposed to. But we also have responsibility of being a shepherd. What do we have? How do we have responsibility for being a shepherd? We know how to be a sheep. What about a shepherd? What is our shepherding responsibility? Come on, well, we're supposed to be trying to help others to believe right. in God, to be where maybe I won't say where we are, but to be the best Christian, I'll say that they can be, or to be the best example of what God wants them to be, that they can be. We should be helping others along should, the way. We should absolutely be doing that, Julia. And everything that God, the shepherd and the shepherd that David's talking about doing for others, which for them, we should, as our shepherding roles, we do the same thing. Mm -hmm. We care for people. We provide for them. We protect them. We lead them when they're weak. We do all that. And so that shepherding role it really, you know, it really stands out as really being something that's important. It's not just for the pastor. Not just for the ministerial staff or stewards. It's for all of us. We have a responsibility to be mm, those shepherds. And the example that we have is a good shepherd, certainly. And we try our best to emulate that and doing the work that we can do in our own area. We can't do that. We can't go but so broad. But in the, in the areas that we're able to touch and reach people, we have that same responsibility to do that. Amen. Amen. Okay, I, I'm going to stop and, and let's, um, Alice, I, I've talked about our stuff and, and where I am with, uh, Alice has something she wants to share. So Alice, take the stage. Okay, this was, um, I came across this during, and it's on the 23rd Psalm, but during, as Robin was mentioning, 9-11, I came across this during the time of the pandemic because that was a, a terrible time in our lives Things were happening all around us. And so, it, and you were more or less isolated because you couldn't go anywhere for the most part. And if you live alone, that you're even more so isolated. And so I was reading just anything that would be that soother for you. So I came across this and I've kept it. And when I get anxious sometimes, and, and in this time climbing where we are, I'm a little anxious, but then I have to rely on knowing who is the, the great person, the person and the God that we serve is going to bring us through this time period. But it goes like this. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, the psalmist says, I lack nothing. Our shepherd guides us into verdant green pastures and alongside quiet healing waters. Our shepherd refreshes our weary sorrowful and anxious souls. Because we have a good shepherd, we do possess everything we need. Unfortunately, it's true that we must walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And yet even here, we rebuff fear because we've encountered the shepherd whose faithful, loving presence consumes every dream, every dread. I will fear no evil, the psalmist says, for you are with me everywhere. So many of us are in need of real help. And yet, even with genuine terrors, terrors, the psalmist tells us that we do not need to fear. We need not fear because our shepherd is both kind and powerful. Moreover, our shepherd provides an abundant feast in the midst of our troubles. He always pursues us with relentless care and fends off all evils. Jesus tells us he's the good shepherd. 
everything the shepherd is, is in Psalm 23. But Jesus is also for us now. Because Jesus is our good shepherd, we have everything we need. He restores our broken hearts. Mm -hmm. He carries us through the valley of the shadow of death, not around it, but through it. When we go astray, he's kind and tender. Like the Psalm shepherd, Jesus is faithful, mm -hmm. never abandons us. He's generous, always providing for us. He's tender, caring for our trembling hearts. He's powerful, defending us from whatever threatens us harm, even the things within us that threaten to undo us. He is relentless. He pursues us with love until our final breath. In the song, the sheep are at peace, safe in the care of the shepherd, and so are we. And I just, I use that from time to time, sits on my desk, and I say, when you start getting that anxious feeling, I go back to the fact that we, he's going to guide us through whatever turmoil and terrors and turmoils in our life. We just have to depend and believe that he will. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. That, that's good, Alice. That, that's good. And it, it act, brings in a little bit of a connection. And I, the rest of the, the PowerPoint I had, it talks about sheeps and shepherds. Uh, you, you raised a point that I think is in here too. Um, wait a minute, where did I lost my? Oh, there it is. Uh, as we go on, and I and I had some questions about sheep and shepherds, uh, and I had a que first question was: Is it difficult to be a sheep? Is it difficult to be a sheep? I guess I'll ask y'all: Is it difficult to be a sheep? Anybody found it, found it difficult to be a sheep? Does that mean a no if you don't say anything, or does that mean mm -hmm. yes it does? Okay. All right. Sometimes it's difficult to be a sheep because, unfortunately, the word that Alex used, unfortunately, even though sheep need help and are not most of, uh, efficient providers for themselves, they do get caught up in the crowd mentality. Sheep can get caught up in, like it was mentioned earlier, sheep will start to follow other sheep. So sometimes when you do what God or do what the shepherd wants you to do, you're the black sheep, the one who wants to do what's right. You kind of stand out in the crowd. But it's okay. Mm -hmm. Stand out and do what's, what's necessary. You can be that sheep that that does what needs to be done. It's not always easy to follow. Uh, the sheep that wants to follow the shepherd sometimes stands out in the crowd. And so you have to stand out and be willing to stand out. Uh, what about being a shepherd? Is that difficult? Anybody, somebody, is being a shepherd difficult? All right, you have to know. Yes, it is. Sometimes it's, it's difficult being a shepherd. Uh, sheep don't always want to follow and actually might decide to go another way. And so uh, it's difficult being a shepherd sometimes and you have to really, you have to really be dedicated to the sheep uh, to be a good shepherd. Being a shepherd can be lonely. When you're out there with and with those sheep, it's just you and the sheep. I mean, it's not like you would. Uh, you go home at night, you you stay there. I mean, you always well. In in those days, in the times that they're talking, shepherds certainly did stay in the fields with their with their sheep. But now today, if you might connect that shepherd, the sense of sense of shepherd to a pastor, for example, or some other leader, you have to. Uh, really commit a part of your, more of your life to to taking care of sheep than than maybe doing some other things. So it may be lonely. It may be doing that work is lonely. Uh, if you really love your sheep, you have to sacrifice your well being and desires. Uh, I, I don't mean sacrifice your well being to the point of, of failing or health issues or, or doing some other crazy things. But I mean, you you might want to do some things that for yourself that you might uh, put off or not do immediately because of taking care of those sheep. And so there, there is some sacrifice uh, with being a, a shepherd or being a good shepherd anyway. Dwight, don't you think that our, a pastor, a good pastor who is our shepherd feels some of those things? Because sometimes he probably, I wouldn't, I'm not talking for Pastor Jefferson, but sometimes you just want to sit down and be at peace with yourself. But yet, and still, you know, I have a, a roster full of sick and shut in. I have this, I have that. I have to make sure this is working, that isn't working. So your mind is constantly um, moving. And sometimes um, you're fighting against yourself because the human part of you, which we all are, would rather say, well, I just want to take this day off. But even in taking a day off, you feel there's somebody there. I have a flock of people that need me. And so mm -hmm. our pastor, 
I feel with this last things that you put on is being a shepherd is a is can be a lonely job because you are at the helm of your entire flock. And we all have needs. We come at with different perspectives and different needs. And so in order to be that good shepherd, he has to rely on the the on Jesus, who is our ultimate shepherd. I should just and say that, amen. Uh, the, the things that may just come up out of the clear blue. He may have decided this is going to be a peaceful evening. Then right. you get this call. Somebody needs you right, right. now. You're right now. I That's can, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, And I could just say amen to both of those and let it go. Let it go. But I have, I have to say something. Robin, I got to say something. Because it's important. Uh, the, in, in our lesson, it makes a distinction between the kinds of guidance and leadership you have. They talk about a good shepherd. They talk about a hireling. A hireling. Remember that word? Did you hear that word? Hear that word before? Hireling. Hireling. That's someone who's doing that job for the money. Who's, who's, who's being a pay, he's being paid to be a shepherd versus a good shepherd. The versus mm -hmm. a good shepherd. A good shepherd cares about those sheep. Uh, and so all the things you said about the pastors, absolutely true. Absolutely true. And there's a difference between, I think, what mm -hmm. we might think about that and maybe what he might think and what could be a thought is that a pastorate uh, is a charge. Not necessarily a charge from the AME church or from the bishop, but it's a call from God. And if you want to look at it as a call from God, then what does God say about this man or this person who has a responsibility for this flock? God holds this person accountable. God holds him accountable. You don't care with the bishop. I mean, the bishop's there. Yeah, the bishop can change your assignment. Josiah Neller can, you know, say what he's got to say. And the folks can get upset. But when you accept that call as being a, a leader, a, that charge of a flock, mm -hmm. you are accepting that as a call from God. And yes. so I believe a good pastor, a good pastor is looking at that as I'm accountable to God. And so when I believe a good pastor accepts that call, or that charge uh, as a good shepherd, then what we talked about, what you said, those sacrifices that are made, those things that happen are evidences of that being a true call. Because we've seen folks who don't necessarily go to that extreme. I said, I'm going home. I'm turning on watching this movie. Somebody call. I'm turning the phone on. And, you know, I get, leave a message. I'll call. I'll call you back tomorrow, or whatever. I'm not being. I'm being kind of extreme. But I'm saying uh, there are situations where some might say, uh, I, I'm busy, or I've made. Plan, I, I'm going. On, whatever. But a good pastor, a good shepherd, will make the sacrifice to to come back and to see what they might be able to do for their sheep. So that that's. In my opinion, that distinction between a hireling, H I E R L I N, hireling versus a good shepherd. That's in your lesson someplace. I saw it. I know I did. All right, last little piece. Last little piece. Uh, adults face difficult situations. We face danger, anxiety, and fear as we journey through life. We can turn to God as our shepherd to lead, protect, and provide for us. We must understand that He is our shepherd and leader and must submit to His leadership. We must mm -hmm. trust him as our provider, asking and thanking him for making provisions for our needs. We must run to him as our refuge in times of trouble. Finally, we must maintain a vital union with God for life. And so that that final piece uh, is, is really important for us as we think about uh, this lesson. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord uh, forever. Uh, yes. So... Uh, if we are doing as, as sheep, as good sheep, uh, what the shepherd is, is directing and guiding us to do, then then goodness and mercy, Julia, shall follow us all the days of our lives. And our intention, our hope is uh, that I and that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that, that's our hope. That's our hope. And that's a promise. That's a promise. And so uh, the 23rd song, confidence. We, we have confidence in God's shepherding. As we've seen, as we've heard through David uh, in this song, we've heard through David's experience, his confidence in God and how that inspired him. So even though David had his falls, his ups and downs and his, his detours all, along that journey, he still believed in God. He still trusted it, and his leadership reflected that and that shepherding reflected that love for God. Uh, and so that's David sharing with us. 
that's David sharing with us this evening as we are on this journey of life for ourselves. And we certainly would experience all those things that David experienced. Uh, uh, things that would walk through val valleys and shadows of death and all the things that might have that might have been approached or that David might experience. And we have that same hope. We have that same uh, uh, benefit of being uh, in, the, in the care of a shepherd. God, he's our shepherd. He sent his son, Jesus, as a shepherd to die for the sheep, for us, that we might have uh, goodness and we may dwell in the house of the Lord, that we might dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If we accept that, if we accept that, we have that, that privilege. And so, good lesson. You notice one thing tonight, we didn't, I didn't look at the, the quarterly, I didn't look at the book, y'all. Y'all have to look at the book on your own. You have to go through and read that on your own. We didn't, I didn't use the book. I didn't use the, but y'all have options or, op, or or access to the quarterly, uh, to the supplement. Uh, into Mr. Penny, but I really encourage you just to read that. Wow. It was good for me, good lesson. Uh, it's always good for me when I learn something I didn't know or, or, or see a different perspective that I didn't see before. The thing I learned, Joe, about the sheep is good because it crosses over. It crosses over and helps me see a little bit more clearly of what David is saying in that song. The sheep won't, won't drink from water when it's moving. Huh? Sheep won't drink from water. When the sheep won't lay down. They won't rest when they're hungry. Mm -hmm. You have to stretch for that connection, James. But that's it's true. Mm -hmm. well, they need to be fed. They need to be fed. We need to nourish. And so we talk about nourishing. We talk about spiritual nourishment uh, and, and the things that can cause them to be unruly when they're not nourished. And so those are important little pieces that I picked up from, from my experience today. And so that was good. And the other piece is this, and I'll, I'm going to go. It, it, it checked my my understanding of shepherding. I have a responsibility to be a shepherd. I always, I always want to be a good sheep. I want to be a good sheep, Alice. I want to be a good sheep. I want to listen to this. I want to follow the way. I want to be a good sheep. I also have shepherd responsibility. We all have shepherding responsibilities. And so it's not just a matter of being a good sheep. I also need to step up and step in at some time, in some cases, to do some shepherding responsibilities. And so that, that makes a good lesson. Else. Mm. Y'all have been absolutely, except Alice and Julia, mm. and maybe Robin for a little bit. Y'all have been very, very, okay, cooperative. I'll call you co cooperative and, mm. and attentive, 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 attentive. That's it. You've been attentive. Uh, but anyway, it's a good lesson. Uh, I'm hoping you go back. And, and it's a very commonly used scripture. I mean, it's all the time. So many times we hear it at funerals. Some people want to commentate and say, why do you have, why do you think this is, what's the connection to a funeral, the 23rd Psalm? Uh, and then so there's some different comments about why the 23rd Psalm might be so frequently used at, at funerals. Because, uh, I mean, the, the very first uh, uh, verse, I mean, he, he's saying, uh, when people are at that, uh, at that place of bereavement, it might be one of the darkest moments of the life. I'm talking about walking through the valley of a shadow. And, and that's one of those moments that, that you could really need that that comfort of knowing that that God is there. So anyway, it could be that. I won't put in put any definition there for you, but uh, anyway, good lesson, good lesson. Anybody else? Do I? Yes, ma'am. One thing that I saw differently this time was leadeth me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I've heard that a thousand times, I never thought of it. For God's life's sake, I thought he led me in the paths of righteousness for my, to help mm. me be better. I never mm -hmm. thought so that I would be an example to someone else for God. I'd never, I'd never interpreted it like that. that yeah. And when you said, look at it, did you see anything different? That's mm -hmm. the one thing in it I saw that's different. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. In other words, I'm supposed to make him more popular with other people because of this righteousness that he has given me. I'd, I'd yeah. never, I'd never thought of that before. That's good. You, you represent. We represent. I mean, um, uh, we represent, right? We represent. And so yeah. that's a good piece. That's a good piece. That's a good piece, Julia. Good piece. All right. All right. So we're at this uh, the point of closing here. Uh, if there are no other comments, I hear none. That we pray for the folks family. We make sure, sure we yeah. keep them because I know that their hearts heavy right now. So sure, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. And you. Yeah. No, so sure. I mean, you know, well, I, I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. Well, you know, and I, I, yes, we will. We we are. I mean, we are already. We have already. Uh, but you know, there's so many things that we uh, could call mm -hmm. names and situations and circumstances, and it's just uh, uh, this. But next that's a days, biggie, right? It, 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 but it's a biggie. But but it, but you know what, Julie? I said this to him the other day, yesterday. And and that and that this is unique for me, and I'm going to share that. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, you know, he, he, and Alan and Junior came to the altar on Sunday for prayer. This is he, she hadn't done that before. She, of course, she's talked about in different settings. Remember Craig and talk about Craig, and but she came uh, on Sunday, uh, and, and I I went back and looked at that, uh, and I saw this mother. I saw a mother. I saw a mother. That, a mother that I know. Uh, stepping up and, and interceding for her child. I saw this. I saw this father stepping in and interceding for a child. Uh, then a day later, uh, the Lord and they, no, no, they were asking for healing and, and, and restoration, and they were asking for what you would ask for for your child. They were asking for that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then a day later, an and a half, uh, God called him, took him home. And I said to them, you know, there's some there's some comfort in that. There, there's peace in that. Uh, you know, we we don't mourn as those who have no hope. We don't. We don't. I don't. Because I told them about a, a session that we had some years ago. We had experiencing God. Some of those of you who are here, part of that process, remember that. Women did it after the men did it. But the men met it, you know, Saturday mornings at 8, 30, I thought that was 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, kill me. But that was good. It was good. Craig Foles sat at my table. We were there. And so through that eight-week session, I, it was there. And I was able to experience and witness Craig rededicating his life, turning his life back over to God. And so, you know, when we have loved ones that, you know, it may have, we don't see all the time or may not exhibit the kind of behaviors that we want to connect to, being a follower and doing the things that Christians do. You might have some questions about them when, when, when death comes, when God takes them home. And I said, we don't have that question about him. We don't. We don't have that question. And also that what also that we ask for, we ask for healing. They ask for healing on Sunday. And I said, God came and healed him on Monday. He didn't heal him the way maybe we asked for. Mm -hmm. But there's no more pain, no more mm -hmm. suffering. None of those things that that, that, that can agonize a, a, a care about someone you care about, that's not there anymore. And you Amen. see what I'm saying? Uh, and so those are the kind of things that we in this in this setting at this moment have privilege to, mm -hmm. more so than somebody who's out there doesn't have any understanding or any kind of concept about life and death. And yeah, we 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 we're concerned with not as those who have no hope. He said, Robert Fold said out of his mouth. He said, when I get to heaven. Now, you know what that says? He said, he's talking about talking to Craig. When I get to heaven, you know what he said? This is jokingly, Julie. This is, this is, this is just off to the side, but it's, it's bad. It's really what he said. I want to ask Craig, why did you get your mama hooked up in football the way she is? Because every time a football game comes on, she, I will ask him, why did you turn your mama on the football? Jokingly. And he was in a mode. He was able to do that. And so there's peace in that. There's peace in that. And so we 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 have to live in such a way that we're able to be able to have comfort and peace, even in the midst of bereavement. Even in the midst of bereavement, God has given us this peace. He's a shepherd is there to comfort us at moments like this. It's really what he's all about. Amen. I kind of went off a bit with that, but it's truth. It's the truth. And sometimes we just need to, need to tell the truth right the way it is. Amen. And, you know, there's other things we need to pray for. Certainly, we're going to pray for people who, I guess we're going to pray for ourselves. Uh, because on Tuesday, in Tuesday, the world could really turn around. There could be some differences in the world. We're not going to worry about it. But we live in a place, and it's just a shame as I think about it, uh, as modern and, and as we as, as as we are in this United States of America. I, if I had to look at it from the outside, I'd say, Lord have mercy, what in the world? 
What in the world? What in the world is going on? Um, and so anyway, we're going to continue to pray for our political parties and our political system. And I just read and I'm going to let it go. But just today, they've already activated National Guards in, in three states anticipating Tuesday. They've already activated the National Guard. Mm. Can you hear what I'm saying? Anticipating trouble at the election. This is what this is what we this is what we this is what we're facing. Anyway, let's continue to pray for the sick. We, we know we got a long uh, list in our church, and as many as I always say that everybody who's going through something is not on that list. Uh, and we we want to just continue to pray for our church friends. It's always good to see Johnny. Uh, you know, Johnny said, "Johnny, I know you hear me, Johnny. I'm, you, you, I'm, I see you, man. I see you there. I see you there. Uh, it's good yeah. to see you. Good to see you. You don't hear." Oh, okay. He said, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Any other concerns? Any other concerns? Hmm. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this privilege. Yes, Lord, you woke us up this morning. You allowed us to go through this day. But just for this hour or so we've been together this evening, we thank you for this privilege to come together and um, mm -hmm. to study and to listen, to talk, to to allow your spirit to move from heart to heart and breast to breast, to let your will uh, come through our, our minds and our hearts and your word to, to penetrate into us. Well, thank you for this privilege. Thank you for giving us the desire to do this. So we weren't forced to do this. Uh, mm -hmm. We're not getting paid to do this. We're doing this because we want to know more about you, Lord, and because we love you. We're coming to learn more about you. So thank you. Or even putting that spirit of desire in our heart. Uh, Father, we want to just be able to, to be good sheep. Yes, we want to be good sheep. But we also need to understand our responsibility to be shepherds too and yeah. to, to try to help and try to do those things, Lord, that we've, uh, we've, we've seen done or had done to us. So help us mm -hmm. to be good sheep and help us, Lord, to even step in and be shepherds when we have to, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, you've heard the names that we've lifted, Lord for causes, for, for sickness, for healing, for bereavement, uh, for for political uh, situations, Lord, for wars and all the things that happen all around the world. And Father, we're just praying your intervention. You need to go in and do whatever is necessary, Lord. We know what we want, what we think should happen, but you already know yeah. what the end's going to be, Lord. And so we're just yeah. asking that your will would be done in the name of Jesus. Uh, we do especially lift up uh, Robert and Madeline Foltz and the Foltz family, Lord. And, and we do take joy. We, we find peace in knowing that even though Craig is not here anymore, Lord, he's with you. He's with mm. you. So we have peace in knowing that, Lord. Thank you mm. for what you've done. Thank in you, the Jesus. name of Jesus. And Lord, so whatever else that is that's going on in our hearts and minds, we pray for what Julia mentioned earlier this evening, peace. Lord, we just want peace. We want peace, Lord. We want to be able to know your peace. And, and in the midst of turmoil and chaos, uh, you talk about that peace that passeth all understanding. And so, Lord, we want to have that peace, knowing that the shepherd sees, the shepherd knows, the shepherd's able to keep us uh, and no matter what's going on. And so, Father, we find peace in believing that, embracing that this evening. Thank you for your message. Thank you for your message. And let it go deep down into our spirits. Lord, keep, continue to bless and, and keep our pastor, our shepherd, mm. and his family. Uh, and bless the rest of our flock, the rest of the sheep in our, in our flock, in our family, in our church family. Bless us and keep us, Lord. Thank you again for this privilege. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Oh, well, just one other thing, Lord. I, I want to just lift up uh, Sister Deborah Taylor, mm -hmm. uh, whose, brother, whose uh, younger, youngest brother passed and will be eulogized here soon. But she also had another emergency this evening, Lord, and wouldn't mm. be here if it wasn't for that. And, and so, Lord, we pray for, I don't know what the situation is, what's going on, mm -hmm. but we, her church school family, Lord, lift her up and ask you, Lord, to touch her and that family and whatever's going on, Lord, now, and bring your peace into the midst of that situation. Yes. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank y'all, sheeps. sheeps. All right. Who was the last person you prayed for? 
Deborah, Deborah Taylor. Do I? De Deborah Taylor. Oh, yeah, she usually would be here. Okay. Yeah, she, Thank she, you. I got a Brother message. James. Oh. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Is that on your ceiling? Is that a sticker on your ceiling with the cowboys? On my ceiling? 